mysteries of creation are there. Up in the sky. Up in the sky. The moon and the planets are there. And new hopes for knowledge and peace are there. Hello, and welcome to your inner journey weather forecast, in which we utilize archetypal astrology to understand the energies in the collective and how we might navigate them in our psychedelic journeys this week, in our spiritual practice this week, navigate them to their best possible manifestation. So this week, we have a couple of uh, very empowering transits. This is Archetypal Explorer here. So this week, uh, August 15th to August 21st, we've got around mid-late week, Mercury conjunct Mars and Sun opposite Jupiter. So these are briefer transits that can be very uplifting and can encourage assertiveness, particularly assertiveness of communication, of speaking our mind. This, though, is on the backdrop of a larger transit, which you can see down here. It looks like it's not a very big deal. It's a Saturn-Pluto conjunction, but it's actually quite a big deal. This was the conjunction that was really active in 2020. And because of retrograde motion, because of Saturn going to retrograde, it is reactivated now. Good news is that it's a the reactivation of the Saturn-Pluto is a brief reactivation because Saturn goes retrograde, just touches on the Saturn-Pluto conjunction again in much of September is when it really is tight or when it's really active. And then October, November, it moves forward, it moves away. So basically Saturn-Pluto in 2020 was the energy of feeling sense of confinement, the sense of the boundaries kind of closing in around us. Um, it can reflect a kind of a fear response in people, the sense of the heavy weightiness of mortality becoming intensified, our awareness of it around us becoming intensified, the sense of, of projecting outwards our own fears onto situations or other people, a sense of feeling that there's a, a kind of a heaviness, a heavy energy in the air, a heavy energy of, of a stark energy, a tragic energy. And the flip side of it is that Saturn and Pluto together are also the most strongest combination for reflecting the deep strengths of humanity. You know, on September 11th, we had a Saturn and Pluto alignment, 2001 at that time. And the falling of the two towers was a very Saturn-Pluto uh, phenomenon because the structures, which is represent, represented by Saturn, were like annihilated and raised in this Plutonic. Pluto is associated with death, rebirth, kind of the powerful, evolutionary, transformative, destructive, and thus creative energies of life, life's ability to both devour itself, destroy itself, and rebirth it from itself. And in September 11th, you know, it was a very kind of almost like literal example of the structures of Saturn experiencing that plutonic fire and destruction and, and just getting raised. And so and also similarly, the Saturn Pluto energy of fear that went around that of calamity, mortality, death, also the sense of othering the sense that at that time, what happened was there was a lot of sort of projecting of the negativity and the fear onto someone outside, you know, the war on terror, you know, like terror is like something that we feel inside. So if you have the war on terror, you know, and you're engaging in, in a war outside, it's, there's a confusion there because actually it's kind of very poetically clear that you're actually on war against yourself. And you're projecting your own terror outside the kind of invasion of Afghanistan, of Iraq. And then, right. So at that time, there was a sense of, of, of kind of outward action that was, that was engaged in as a sort of like a retribution of fear, of pain, of hurt, of destruction that happened on U.S. soil. Similarly, there was a real othering in terms of, you know, who could travel, who could board planes, you know, who, how people dress, how people are looked at, you know, became objects of fear, of terrorism. This is very common during Saturn-Pluto times, the sense of othering. 
And so now we are seeing it again, sense of fear projected outwards. And so, you know, we can see it in different ways, like Asian hate or, or for instance, like, you know, the vaxxed versus the unvaxxed, you know, everybody's projecting onto the other people. And, and then board, countries are closing their borders to other countries. So this alignment, the Saturn-Pluto, Saturn retrograding coming back into the Saturn-Pluto conjunction that was very active in 2020, is just been kind of creeping up over the past, you know, basically two months. And now it's getting as tight as it's going to get. And in September, we'll get as tight as, as it's going to get, which is not very tight. It's not a very exact alignment. You can see on this graph, you know, something's got to be up at the top of the graph to be an exact alignment. This alignment is very is much down here. So it's 15 degree orb. So it's not that tight. It's 15 degrees away, but it's tight enough to be active. So that's why there's this kind of like, a wave of familiar kind of sensation impressions from 2020, you know, oh, okay, Delta variant, everybody's got to wear the mask again, countries are closing borders again, you know, people are getting sick again, uh, there's this fear of mortality again, it's a heavy atmosphere in the air, people are dying, I know of a person who died recently of, of COVID, and so it's a return, it's a return to this energy, which you know, it really sits on us in, in September and then it, and then it dissipates, you know, over October, November, December, by December, the, it should be really out of alignment. I mean, it should be out of orb, so no longer active. And all of this is to say that usually with the, with the transit, the last pass of the transit is the last chance for us to integrate the positive sides of the transit. And like I said, Saturn Pluto is can reflect the humans drawing out from the depths of themselves the most positive, noble side of their character in the face of challenge. The September 11th example would be that this, the towers are falling, but even though the towers are unstable and looking like they're going to fall, these firemen, fire people, uh, rescue people, a lot of them charged in there anyways to save who they could save. And if they couldn't save them and they all, then they perished too, along with them. That was something that they accepted along with their job. So it was this steely determination. It was a sense of duty, like depth of duty that, that's, that transcends even their own mortality. The sense of, of calling upon the depth inner authority within oneself to actually race into a burning tower for the sake of others, even though if you, there's, there's a high percentage that you might not believe in yourself. So those energies are in the air. There's the last pass for this time around of Saturn Pluto over the next coming, you know, two, two months or so. And it's a chance for us to really not, it's to really make, you know, transits are an opportunity an opportunity to, to take, to learn the lesson, to manifest, to be the manifestation of these archetypes in their highest resonance and their most noble form. And so it's a time for us to dig deep into our maturity and tap into it and, and make the most out of this transit in our psychedelic journeys that can be, you know, facing in the journeys, like real, the reality of mortality, you know, the reality of mortality and tragedy, that that's an aspect of, of existence and how, what does that call forth in you? What type of maturity an inner mastery does that call forth in you? What type of duty does that allow you to step into? And so that's that's where we're at. That's where we're at. we're at this week. That's where we're at as we're going into the coming weeks. That's the larger outer planet transit. When we talk about the inner planets, we've got some assistance here. We've got some positive, more short-term transits in the just this week, which is Mercury conjunct Mars and Sun opposite Jupiter. So sun opposite jupiter in our psychedelic journeys it can be a sense of hope it can be a sense the sun the sense of identity jupiter the sense of upliftment the sense of success upliftment kind of a buoyancy of optimism we can tap into that you know we can tap into that and i think i'm tapping into it a little bit right now by describing the saturn pluto conjunction in positive terms you know the positive potential there of if humanity to reach into the depths of itself and come up with come up with some nobility mercury conjunct mars that can be very empowering we want to watch out for it though in psychedelic journeys we want to let energies out that are pent up and let them out verbally you know it could be like yelling or you know like admitting that we're angry at somebody or something like that because if we try to stuff down any 
kind of energy that is ours to assert, but we're holding it within during a, a Mercury conjunct Mars transit, it might just come out anyways, and it could cause damage. We, you know, declaration of war or something with a friend, you know, something that is just, there's too much pressure built up behind the message. So we want to titrate it. That's what psychedelic journeys are good for spiritual practices, primal screaming, whatever it is, something that allows you to vent this energy like allows your vocal cords and your expression or your writing or, or your communication these are mercurial things to be a vent for this assertive energy you know this this kind of power of message that you have and and let it come out let it come out so it doesn't just come out unexpectedly in an in a inter interaction and end up kind of being a cause of of kind of like confrontation or battle or something like that between you and somebody else so these are our transits for this week. Let's use archetypal mindfulness. Let's be aware of them so that when they show up, when the energy show up, we say, okay, yeah, James talked about that. I recognize, I see it. So that when it shows up, we can allow it. We just see, okay, where do you want me to go? Where, where do you want to take me? You know, I see you, I see you, you're here. It's assertive communication, sun, Jupiter, optimism, upliftment, a sense of, of positive lift, Saturn, Pluto, a sense of the gravity of life, you know, tragedy, the heaviness of mortality, you know, okay, I see you, I see all of these players, these archetypal players. Now, let me just be with you in my presence in the present moment and see where you want to take me. How do you want to manifest? How do you want the carpet of my life to unfold before me? And I follow it in that way. And that way tends to allow the archetypes to manifest and they're more, they tend to be happier, more well-behaved in a more productive form. If we are not going against them or being unconscious to them. We're just being aware. We're being aware, archetypal mindfulness. Oh, I see through my life events, these are specific events, but underlying, I can see that they're actually vehicles for the archetypes to be expressed. And I recognize them, I see them. Let's see where they wanna take me. I'm just gonna be open and be receptive. Excellent. So I wish you a wonderful week. I wish you a wonderful practice of archetypal mindfulness and we shall see you next week.